Hello class, it's Ms. Augustine again. So we left off on this slide that shows all of the different um, orbital possibilities and again going down for the principal energy levels 1 through 7. Uh, recall I said that we would only worry about levels 1 through 4 and that then the number of sublevels here indicated by 1, 2, 3, and 4. So at level 1 has 1, 2 has 2, 3 has 3, and 4 has 4. And then within those sublevels there are different types of orbitals, um, of sublevels, and so you have um, in the principal level 1, the one sublevel it has is called S. Um, level 2 has 2 S and P, 3 has S, P, D, and 4 has S, P, D, and F. And so I wanted to go into showing you some visualizations. So what I have here for you is from the University of Kentucky there is an orbital simulator and I thought it would be helpful to show you what these different orbitals that I just told you about look like. And so going in the orbital tab and then clicking on hydrogen-like orbitals, what we can do here is we can see that there are S, P, D, and F orbitals that you can look at. So starting with an S orbital, remember I said that the S orbital um, is the first of the sublevels and it is spherical in shape and if you actually click on it you can set it in motion and then we can look at the P orbital and remember I said that the P orbital has three separate orbitals associated with it. Let me scooch this up for you to see and the three um, p orbitals are kind of shaped like dumbbells and let me see if I can adjust this for you sorry and they are like dumbbells so what we're looking at here is this so-called fuzzy cloud and again uh, this indicates for you the area where it's 90 percent likely to find um, a p electron and these three sublevels are like three bedrooms each can hold two electrons and I uh, indicated that they're on the uh, X Y and Z axes and if I were to click on one of these it would put it in motion and then we could go back and see what a D orbital looks like D orbitals are really crazy there's five of them and most of them are cloverleaf in shape so again these colored areas are showing you where it's most likely to find an electron and the fifth one is not cloverleaf in shape this is the z squared one and it's sort of like a dumbbell with a donut and if we went back we could even see that the f orbitals get even crazier there are seven of those and then finally if we go to the G orbitals there are nine of them and they get crazier and crazier in shape so what are we actually looking at here what we're looking at is what the probability of finding an electron in space looks like so these are pretty much telling you what the path of an electron looks like we'll go back to S because that's the least freaky looking so now going back to our slides so that was that little website I showed you was this atomic orbital visualizations so recapping what we just saw each s orbital is spherical in shape although the University of Kentucky spheres are prettier colored. Each p orbital has this so-called dumbbell shape and each d orbital has this so-called cloverleaf shape. Except for that one funny d orbital that is shaped like a dumbbell with a donut. And each orbital can only hold a maximum of two electrons. So each atomic orbital may only contain a maximum of two electrons. So when we're talking about the principal level, n equals one,
since it only has the one sublevel, and if there's only one sublevel, it's S, then the S sublevel we saw has one orbital, which is kind of like uh, how many bedrooms does that level have? And the S sublevel has one bedroom, so one orbital that can hold electrons. And each bedroom or orbital is like a bunk bed. It can have a maximum of two electrons, one in the upper bunk and one in the lower bunk. So I want to just do a quick recap of the sublevels that we looked at in the University of Kentucky uh, visualization website. So sublevel type S, P, D, F, G, H, there's an I too, but it's too complicated. The number of orbitals at each sublevel, and then the number of electrons per orbital, and that allows you to calculate the total number of electrons in a sublevel. So if we remember that the S has one orbital, each orbital, you'll notice all up and down here, each orbital can always only hold two electrons. So one orbital times two electrons is two. The P sublevel has three orbitals. Again, times two electrons per orbital. The maximum a P sublevel can hold is six. The D sublevel has five orbitals. Each orbital can hold two electrons. Five times two is 10. And the F sublevel has seven. Seven times two is 14. G would be 9 times 2 is 18, and H 11 times 2 is 22. So this is telling you at each of these sublevels the maximum number of electrons that can be held based upon the number of the orbitals and recalling that each orbital can only hold two electrons. So then if we go to the principal energy levels, we can remember that energy level 1 has just one sublevel, and again, so that one sublevel is called S, and S holds two electrons, so maximum at the principal level one would be two electrons. At level two, there's two sublevels, S and P, two electrons for S, six for P, that equals 18. At the third principal energy level, there are three sublevels, the S, the P, and the D, 2, 6, 10 equals 18. And finally, at the fourth principal energy level, there are four sublevels, S, P, D, and F, with 2, 6, 10, and 14, or 32 total electrons. Now we can complete some worksheets. The two worksheets that I am having you do are the atomic orbital worksheet and the following page about sublevels. And just so you're not confused, the two worksheets that I would like you to try to complete are this one, the atomic orbital one, and this one, complete the information. For this one, you're going to just be filling out these various things using your notes that I've just given you. Over here, again, principle level one, so you're going to pretty much copy right off of your notes what's going to go in here. And then down here, our next set of notes are going to be about an alpha diagram so that you can leave this one blank for now. You don't have to fill in this funny table one yet, but at a later date we will. Now I'm hoping that you're able to complete these. Feel free to use your textbook, which are located, as you know, in the closet to complete these. And again, please work on these two sheets. When I eventually collect the packet, I will be looking for these two worksheets to be done. I will be making some more videos for you for our next class. I miss you guys and I hope you're doing okay. This is Ms. Augustine signing off.